good day to everyone. I hope you're doing well at this time. I hope your family stays uh, safe and healthy amidst this pandemic we are experiencing right now. So for anything else, uh, let me introduce myself. I am engineer adults race in Indonesia. I am a licensed civil engineer and I am also a faculty member of Technological Institute of the Philippines, Quezon City Campus, located at Cabo, Quezon City. Uh, I graduated with a Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering way back 2015 at papantasan ng Lungsod ng Manila located at Intramuros, Manila. And I am currently taking up Master of Science in Civil Engineering major in Structural Engineering at, at University of the Philippines, Diliman Campus, Diliman, Quezon City. And my email is adamsresgenisha.gmail.com so you can contact me there. Or if you want, you can just search my name at Facebook. So just try to search my name and uh, if you want to contact me you can contact me via facebook or via messenger so our subject is ce009 mechanics of the formable bodies although the previous name of this course or the subject is strength of materials and then it was changed to mechanics of the formable bodies maybe because to make the subject uh, general in nature Kasi pag sinayabang strike of materials, it's like parang nakafocus ka lang sa materials eh. So, siguro from, from that concept to, to be generalized, ginawa na lang instead of materials, ginawang general na deformable body. So, lahat na nanaw deformable body, hindi na lang basta materials. So, konting ano lang, disclaimer lang. So, itong presentation ko is obviously hindi perfect. May mga, maaaring may mga errors dito. Or ma maaaring hindi ito kompleto. Hindi 100% na kompleto to. And you as a student na nag-aaral, it's your responsibility na take note mo yung mga, ano dito, mga something na kailangan i-correct. And, uh, uh, don't take this presentation as uh, kompleto na kasi uh, actually ano lang naman to supplementary material lang naman to so hindi kompleto lahat na nandito hindi lahat ng kailangan kong wala man ay nandito na so I hope kahit pa paano nagbabasa ka pa rin ng mga, rib, ng mga libro and lastly uh, tong presentation na to yung mga focus and problems and other things na nandito uh, I don't own them so credit credit goes to the respective owners of the photos and the problems and konting ano lang uh, request lang na sana itong material na to don't don't upload the presentation or powerpoint presentation to any online platform for distribution without my consent so yun lang naman so, mga references na ginamit ko dito for this presentation. Una, Mechanics of Materials by uh, Pytel and Jan. Uh, I don't really know if this is the latest edition, but it doesn't matter naman because usually naman yung mga book naman, almost the same lang naman yung mga laman yan ng bawat edition. Kaya lang naman nagkakaroon ng bagong edition yan is because uh, merong mga konting na revise or may mga they develop pa na organ, pagkaka-organize ng mga topics. So, almost the same lang naman yan. Another reference na ginamit ko dito is yung book ni Hibler. Yung Mechanics of Materials. Itong mga taong yan, si Hibler, si Pytel, si Lajan. Yan yung mga names na dapat mong tandaan as civil engineering student kasi. Uh, yung mga book niyan, mga ganda yung mga libro niyan. Kasi... Yung mga authors na yan, mga civil engineers talaga yan. So, ikaw nga, syempre, gusto ko maging civil engineer, edi, kanino ka mamakikinig, edi sa civil engineer din. 
So, yung mga book nyo, mga tao nga, mga author na yung mga ganda yan. So, you can patronize them. Last reference ko na ginamit for this presentation is obviously Google. Sa mga images for better visualization. So, I don't really own the uh, the images. Credit goes to the uh, owners of those images. So, our goal for this discussion is three. Meron tayong tatlong goal for this discussion. So, una, to be familiar with the definition of the course, yung sub, uh, mechanics of the formable bodies. Before we go on with the study of the subject, syempre dapat nauunawaan muna natin, ano ba yung subject? Ano ba yung definition ng subject? So, in this presentation, in this discussion, I will try to discuss the definition of the course we are taking now. Next goal is to understand the significance and context of the course or the subject. Bakit ba natin inaaral yung course na to, yung subject na to? Bakit natin kailangan to sa buhay or sa pag-aaral natin? And ano ba yung meron sa subject na to? At the end of the same, ano ba yung mga malalaman natin, matututunan natin sa subject na to? So to answer those questions, I will try to discuss all of them, yung significance ng subject. And kung ano pa yung meron doon, yung context ng subject na yun, yun yung, yun yung second goal natin for this discussion. And the last goal or uh, intended learning outcome for this discussion is to recall the knowledge needed prior to the study of the subject or the course. Kasi mahirap mag-aral ng subject, like for example, mechanics of the formable bodies, na yung prerequisite niya na subject, which is in this case yung statics, yung statics of rigid bodies, mahirap mag-aral, mag-proceed, na hindi mo pa master yung prerequisite niya na subject. So, in this case, ang isa sa mga goal ko is let you know kung ano-ano pa talaga yung part ng uh, previous subject, ng prerequisite subject na kailangan mo master it before ka mag-proceed sa pag-aaral ng mechanics of the formable bodies. So, yun yung tatlong goal natin for this discussion. So, let's start for the first goal to be familiar with the definition of mechanics of the formable body. So, what is mechanics of the formable body? Is ba talaga? Ano ba yung ibig sabihin niya? Mechanics of the formable body. Parang, ano ba ibig sabihin? Parang ang vague niya eh. Ang vague niya, pakinggan eh. So, let's try to define the subject using the words na nandyan sa kanya. So, simulayan natin sa bodies or body. Ano ba yung body? Ano ba yung body na yan? Ano ba yan? Um, uh, katawan lang ba yan? Ano ba yan? Naka-restrict lang ba yan sa mga, sa mga katawan, for example? Uh, ano ba yan? Literal ba yan na body? So, actually, when you say body, technical definition ng body is combination of large number of particles. So, ano naman yung particle? Particle, very small amount of matter. So, kung very small amount yan, technically, ang in-occupy na lang yan is single point. Single point yan, kung napakaliit lang yan na matter, ibig sabihin lang yan, kahit ano pang shape yan, mapa triangle, square, rectangle, and so on and so forth. Kung napakaliit na lang yan, Lahat yan, kahit anong shape yan, isa lang ang itsura yan, point na lang. So, ibig sabihin lang nun, yung actual na geometry nila, nung matter na yan, can be neglected. Kasi nga, hindi mo naman na mabibigyan ng importance yung shape niya o yung geometry niya. Kasi nga, pag tinignan mo siya, point na lang siya, parang ganito. Yan. So, syempre medyo malaki-laki yung point yan. Syempre, nilaki ako na kasi... Kung sobra liit yan, baka di natin makita. So, yung point na yan, single point na yan, that is an example of particle. And this is another example of particle. So, this is particle, 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 particle. Ngayon, by definition, sabi niya, kapag pinag-combine mo yung mga particles, ang mabubuo mo ay body. So, ibig sabihin, etong nabuo natin, when we combine these particles, this is called a body. So, parang ang itsura ng body nito is rectangular in shape. 
kung mapapansin nyo, parang nakapo tayo ng body, rectangular in shape, composed of particles. So, ano naman yung ibig sabihin ng deformable? Paano natin maunawahan yung meaning ng deformable or deformable body? Uh, siguro, it is best to understand the meaning of deformable by defining the opposite meaning. Yung, yung, yung opposite ng deformable which is rigid body. So, alam, yun, alam na alam yun na to. Kasi sa statics of rigid body is puro rigid body yung inaral natin doon. So, rigid body, obviously, body siya, composed of large number of particles siya. Pero, when you say rigid, rigid body, yung, yung positions ng mga particles doon sa body, they occupy fixed positions relative to each other. So, take note of that. Fixed positions relative to each other, even after the application of load. Ibig sabihin lang nun, kung meron kang body, inapply mo ng load, dapat yung mga particles niya, they will occupy fixed positions relative to each other. Hindi siya literal na fixed position na hindi siya gagalaw dyan. Fixed position siya in a sense na kung i-compare mo dun sa uh, ibang particles niya. Say for example, ito yung upper, upper left. Ito. Upper left particle na to. Siya ay nasa kaliwa nitong particle na to. At siya rin ay nasa taas ng particle na to. So, yun yung position niya relative dito sa ibang particle. Ngayon, kung rigid ba dito, dapat, pag in natin ng load yan, yung position nitong particle na to relative dito sa ibang particles, hindi dapat magpabago. So, if that, is, if that will be the case, ibig sabihin, yung body, body na to is actually a rigid body. So, say for example, yan nga, meron akong force in apply. So, obviously, kagalaw yan. Kagalaw yung body natin. Inapply mo ng force eh. Pero kung titignan nyo, kung ano nangyari dito sa particle na to, yung ina-observe natin kanina, nagbago ba siya ng position relative to the other particles? So, obviously, by investigation, yung position niya, hindi naman nagbago relative to the other particles. Siya ay nasa kaliwa pa rin nito at nasa taas pa rin nito. So, that is what we meant by occupying fixed position relative to each other. So, if that is the case, ibig sabihin lang nun, yung body na pinag-uusapan natin ay rigid body. So, ngayon, since naunawa na natin ano yung rigid body, mas madali nang maunawaan kung ano yung meaning ng deformable body kasi obviously, that is just the opposite of rigid body. So, deformable body is just the opposite of rigid body. Ibig sabihin, ang deformable body isa pa di, which is not rigid. Opposite na lang nito. Ibig sabihin lang nun, nag-deform siya kapag in-apply mo siya ng load. And one of the examples ng deformable, deformable body is mga materials. So, balikan lang natin yung example natin na body kanina. So, ito pa rin yung body na yun. Initially, ang shape niya is rectangle. Observe pa rin natin to yung isang particle na ito. Nasa kaliwa siya nito. Nasa taas siya nito. Now, For example, in-apply natin siya ng force. Observe natin kung ano mangyari sa position na itong particle na to relative to the other particle. In-apply mo ng force, ano nangyari sa position niya? Yun. Nag-iba siya ng position. Napunta na siya sa taas na to, which is kanina, nasa kaliwa siya. So, if that is the case, kung in-apply mo ng load yung body at nagkaroon ng change in position, yung mga particles, yung sabihin lang nun, yung body is a deformable body. Or sa madaling salita na lang, kung nagkaroon ng change in shape yung body after application of load, yung sabihin lang nun, deformable body siya, not rigid siya. So, parang ganito, initially, ang shape niya is rectangle. Nung in mo ng load, na nun ang naging shape niya, parang naging trapezoid na siya. So, nagkaroon ng change in shape, yung sabihin, na-deform siya. Kung na-deform siya, ibig sabihin, siya ay deformable body. So, naisa-isa na natin yung mga, mga words yan. Siguro, pwede na natin i-define yung mismong definition ng mechanics of deformable bodies or pwede na rin natin tawagin ng mechanics of materials or we prefer, we prefer uh, mechanics of deformable bodies. So, what is the definition of the subject, the mechanics of deformable bodies? It's, it is a branch of mechanics 
that studies the internal effects and deformations that are caused by application of an external loading. So in summary, ang mechanics of deformable bodies pala is all about studying ano ba ang effect ng application ng external load sa isang body, sa isang material. And ano-ano yung mga effects na pinag-uusapan natin doon? Ano yung magiging internal effect doon sa body? And ano yung magiging deformation ng body after application of external load? So, say for example, meron ako dito ng material or body. Steel, kunyari steel na parang rod. Na-playan ko siya ng external load. External load dito, external load dito. So, technically parang ano siya, hinahalta ko siya. So, kung hinahalta ko siya, sa mechanics of deformable bodies, kung meron kang external load, sa mechanics of deformable bodies, ang inaaral natin is, ano ba yung effect? Ano yung effect niyang external load na yan? Dito sa material. Ano yung nagagawa niyang deformation? Dito sa material, ano yung na, na produce niya na internal effect tuon sa loob ng material? So, if you can imagine, pag meron kang material, in-apply mo ng ng force na ganyan. Tawag dito sa force na ganito, tension force. Tendency is, kung ina-apply mo ng tension force itong material na yan, kung na-imagine nyo, tendency is, mag elongate yung material mo. Yan, mag elongate siya until such time na mag-break siya. Kung nakita nyo, yan, nag-break. Oh, na, nahiwalay. So, sa mechanics of the formable bodies, ang inaaral natin is, ano yung effect nitong external load na to? dito sa material. Ano yung deformation na napoproduce niya yan? Ano yung anong magnitude niya? Anong elongation na yan? Na, na napoproduce niya dito sa material. And ano yung reason bakit itong internal surface na to tsaka yung internal surface na to na kanina magkatikit ngayon, nung in-apply ng load, naghiwalay na. Ano yung reason? Ano yung, ano yung anong reason bakit naghiwalay sila? Yung internal surface na yan. So yun, Yung mga bagay na yan, yung internal effects na yan, yung deformation na yan, yan, dyan umiikot yung subject natin ngayon na mechanics of deformable bodies. So, konting ano lang, historical background lang. Pakilala ko lang si Galileo Galilei, isa sa mga tao, sa mga few people na reason bakit tayo may inaaral ngayon na mechanics of deformable bodies. Kasi, uh, Galileo Galilei performed experiments about the effects of loads on rods. So, yung, yung pinag-aralan natin kanina dito, kung ano yung naging effect ng application ng load na to dito sa material na to. Actually, even before, nauna nang mag-aral about dun si Galileo Galilei. So, kumbaga na yan, uh, forefather ng, ano, ng mechanics of deformable bodies. Yan si Galileo Galilei. So, I think I don't know yet. Historical background.